Now, Zimbabwe's finance minister recently visited the United Kingdom as the government over there is looking to attract investors and their capital back into the country. CGTN's Jianhua Li sat down with Professor Mtulin Kobe to explore the government's economic recovery plans. This is part of that conversation. China has been a large investor in Zimbabwe. That, that's welcome. As you know, Zimbabwe has had uh, challenges attracting uh, other investors who uh, seemed concerned about its uh, credit status in terms of the areas that we owe to various uh, uh, countries out there. And China has been very forthcoming to, to support Zimbabwe. So uh, right across the board, as I said earlier, uh, in, in the mining sector, uh, in the agricultural sector, and then also investment in critical infrastructure, especially energy infrastructure. So China has been very uh, uh, important. And Zimbabwe is considering to join the BRICS. Zimbabwe is looking at joining the BRICS. We've made contact with the management. We've made contact with the current shareholders uh, for us to progress that uh, you know, uh, initiative forward. So we look forward one day to them to being accepted uh, into the BRICS bank. We're trying to expand sources of capital, trying to expand uh, uh, various platforms where we can source additional capital for development. And what do you think you can achieve by joining the BRICS? De-dollarization, I mean, is it part of your goal? Uh, well, you know, what, what we achieve is just access to additional capital uh, for infrastructure development and for the development agenda in, in general and move our country forward. We recognize that we, we have to keep expanding sources of capital and the BRICS Bank is one such source of capital. Mm -hmm. And we know Zimbabwe is the second largest informal economy in the world, which is good news for the poor. But the problem is, it could be challenging to integrate informal economy into formal economy. Well, it's the economy, you know, whether it's informal or informal. It's so the it economy. doesn't really matter. So our view is, is exactly that. And I think the thing to do is just to figure out how that informal economy can contribute to the fiscus in terms of tax revenues. And we think we've figured it out by introducing an electronic transactions tax of 2%, but also introducing what is called a location tax, where as long as there's an address from where an informal sector player is operating from, we're able to, to make sure that the landlord uh, can be a tax agent and be able to collect tax from them. So we know last year, Zimbabwe launched the gold coins to curb inflation which is called Mosi Oatunia. So when it was first launched, it was around one coin, was around 1,824 US dollars. And what is the value now? Oh, it really follows the gold price. So whatever the gold price is globally, the bullion price, it follows that. So wherever the gold price is, that's where it will go. Because that's, that's the benchmark. We don't have a Zimbabwe-specific price for an ounce of, of, of that gold. We use the, the global price as the reference point. In fact, and investors want that. They want to know that they're actually holding a piece of gold, which is valued at, at, at global uh, valuations. We've innovated, by the way, the central bank and some private sector players acting independently have innovated. And we are now have unitized the gold coins.